All right, welcome everyone to episode 19 of Upland The Real Deal. This is a weekly channel that I'm doing. Uh, my name is Andy Atu, I'm your host, and I look at Upland and the Web3 context in which it lives. You can follow me on Twitter or watch my YouTube videos. Uh, and uh, today, because of the new FIFA initiative, we're going to dive right in to what every new player should know. But I'm sure there's lots of starter guides out there. Instead of telling you what you should do, I'm going to tell you the five things that I did that you should not do. And then I'll add some tips at the end. Uh, let's get into it. So, first thing is, uh, I'm uploading this on November 13. On November 15, Rio expansion is coming. Two neighborhood collections, one an under eye and one an extension of the neighborhood of Tijuca. Uh, excuse my Portuguese, I won't even promise. That I'm Portuguese, I'm not. Uh, but you notice there's a little circle one in the middle of your screen next to Hosp Hospital Federal do or Andarai. That is my jump point, right? So I want to mint three in Andarai to fill a collection. The minute that uh, city goes live, my block explorer is going to float into town, pick up three properties. And then I'm away off to Barra de Tijuca. So, what is my goal? Is to optimize for time because time is literally money, or Apex in this case. You know, there's 200,000 players who are active on uh, Upland right now, 200 quarter million. So, when there's a new city release and people are interested, they're going to compete pretty hard for the, the hot properties. In this case, I'm not convinced that Rio is going to be so competitive because this is the city expansion. But I want to pick up Andarai because then I want to go and try and pick up some properties on the Atlantic Ocean. So I know those will probably be fairly competitive to get. So I just want to move quickly, grab three, fill my collection. That's a limited collection. I believe it's 1.73 times multiplier to your bonus. For those who are new, Bonus is the extra interest you collect on your property every day, every month, every year. And so if I bought a property for 10,000 UPEX, which is the equivalent of $10, I would get 1,470 UPEX free after one year just for holding that property. But only if I'm the first person who bought it, the 14.7% is paid off the initial purchase price. If I sold it for 20,000, that person would not get the full bonus because they had, they would only get the equivalent of 14.7% on the original 10,000. So keep it in mind, it's much better to mint a new city at the lease. You got a much better chance of selling your properties for a profit. You got a much better chance of getting the multiplier, getting the benefits if you get them at mint than trying to buy them on the secondary. So I'm going to pick up three from under eye, and then I'm going to try and mint the coastline because I like to be near the water. We'll talk about some of those strategies later. But notice I'm ready for the 15th. If you're a new player and you're a little bit slow, I wouldn't worry about it. I would still start in Rio because FSA properties will not mint as quickly as regular properties. So you'll still probably have a chance to get three properties in each neighborhood for your collections. Something to keep in mind, aside from your two neighborhood collections that you can pick up uh, on the 15th, you get one for a newbie, three properties on the same street, and five properties in the same city. That's another nine properties that can go in your collections. So one of the things I advocate is throwing a little bit of money, uh, get yourself registered as a proper uplander instead of a visitor. And then what you can do is you can sell your properties for a profit. For example, I don't want to come to Rio. I want under eye. It's 10 to 15,000 upex a property, but for new players, it's only five. Well, you buy for five, you sell to the established players for 10, You've made 5,000, right? 
they only give you 4,000 to play with to begin with. So you can maybe only buy one or two properties. It's going to take you a while to get the wheel turning and to start to make profit. So what do you want to do? You can put in 20 bucks. Maybe I put in the medium article, why you would put in $20, why you put in $50. Uh, but it's all about getting the wheel turning. I know players who put in $40, $50 and then done very well. The initial start is often important for getting you going quickly, uh, but you don't need to put a lot of money into the game if you want to make topics, if you want to make be successful. Uh, you just have to be smart about it. But I do recommend at least throwing in the $5 if you use a referral code get five dollars plus your bonus plus your starting uh, upix it qualifies you for the first rank of uplander it allows you to sell the properties you want once you can sell them you can take advantage of the markups that established players are willing to pay for what's called fsa properties or starter properties that the new players can buy so i want you to go into these two new neighborhoods and buy fsa properties and then buy some regular property. Why? Your FSA, you can flip maybe for twice, but your regular properties uh, will actually have a higher mint value. They'll have a higher cost attached, but they'll also earn you more upex over time. And there is a market for them. They will move a little bit slower. But if you spend 10, you can sell them for 12, you can sell them for 13, and in the meantime, collect a good bonus. Let's move on to the mistakes I made and we'll see. These are some of the mistakes I made. I didn't take advantage of any bonuses. In fact, I watched a few YouTube videos. I just got started one night. I got addicted. I didn't know what I was doing. The next day I woke up, I was like, I have to learn <laughs> what I'm doing. And I just jumped on YouTube and started to learn upline. I made a mistake by not taking advantage of bonuses. I mean, I should have known more about the game before I started. Paying more than I'm comfortable with, not knowing about player initiatives, nodes, which are online communities, not having the right tools, not having a strategy. Yeah, let's go through them. So, as I said, let's say you join the game and you uh, throw $10 into the game, you'll get the 10,000 topics in your account. You can see I've got 1 million right now. You get your 4,000 starting uh, account. 10,000 that you bought from the market. Plus, if you use your referral code, you get an extra 50 cents. So now you've got 5,000. We're at 19 instead of 14. Well, you can look at the first property I bought. I spent 65,000. I, I was like, you know what? I like the idea of uplands. It resembles Monopoly, but it's competitive. I have a huge community, quarter million active players, 3 million players in total. I want to be a part of it. Where do I start? Start with my home. This isn't exactly my home, but it's Hyde Park, uh, Chicago, where I lived for many years. And so I just said, okay, I want to be in Hyde Park. I need a collection. What do I buy? The cheapest thing I could find that was seemed reasonable was 1351 X54 Street. I spent 65 bucks. I spent 65,000. If I put my $50 in, I would have got a bonus 25, you know, I would have saved myself some, some money. Uh, so the bonus is actually really important. It just gives you that fast start. If you're going to put money in, might as well get the bonus. Okay. Mistake number two, buying more than you're comfortable with. I bought, okay. I still think it was a good idea. I just think it was the wrong price for me at the time. And it's probably still the wrong strategy for me. We'll talk about that. But I knew that terminal in the famous international airports would at some level be valuable, right? So I was like, LA's coming out, LA's the first city that I was experiencing as a new city. It's not the first. We have over 20 cities in Upland right now. So I'm like, I want a terminal. I registered, I missed out buying it in the first round. So I bought it on what we call the secondary market, $3,200. Now I spent a lot of time researching this. I was like, what is the price of a terminal? 
I learned from my first mistake of just buying in Hyde Park just because it seemed cool. And I watched a bunch of YouTube. I recommend you get on YouTube, you get on Discord, learn what you're doing before you put in too much money. So I spent $3,200, which is still actually a pretty good deal for an airport. You can see now I could have probably flipped it for four thousand. Just because something's listed for four thousand doesn't mean it's going to sell that much. So I'm paying four to five thousand dollars for terminals. I paid three thousand two hundred. I was pretty happy with it, but it was expensive. It was you know, I was like, I don't feel comfortable with this. What happens if I don't get my money back? If I made the wrong strategy, the wrong move. So I listed it instead of for dollars, I listed it for UPEX. So I sold it for 5.2 million UPEX, which is the equivalent of $5,200. And actually one of the big whales in the game bought it, thank you. Um, and I was like, it gave me a sense of relief that I didn't just put all my eggs in one basket, right? And I wanted to diversify and I felt I was too narrowly concentrated, and I just wanted to realign to a place I was more comfortable with. Much more happy now that I've, I've sold my airport for Upix. I'm investing that Upix in every new city release. I've still got a million to go. So I'm happy. I'm in a good spot, right? You don't have to do more than you're comfortable with. Just take it slow, learn the game, you know, read. Watch YouTube, keep going step by step. I didn't know about nodes and what are nodes? Nodes are player communities and players working together with other players to build up Upland. Honestly, I thought that Morningside Park, where SoFi Stadium is, was going to be one of the big standard or uh, limited collections. I didn't really know what I was doing. So, honestly, looking back now, Standard was probably the best I could expect. What is that? Every level of exclusivity gives you a bigger bonus on your uh, collections. So standard will give you 1.3, maybe 1.4. Limited will give you 1.6, 1.7. An exclusive 1.9 times 2, or 2 times the regular interest rate, which at the moment is 14.7%. So I have an exclusive. Uh, two exclusive collections in uh, Arlington, Texas. So instead of 14.7, I'm getting 30% return on my uh, purchase. 30%, pretty confident. I'm pretty happy. Now, I might sell those. I might not. At least I'm not in a rush. I know I've got something that uh, is kind of returning the Apex. And for now, I'm pretty happy with that, where that's at. All in on Morningside Park, I was like, LA is my first city. I want to buy lots of LA. Where am I going to buy? I'm going to buy near the stadium. Football is cool. I'm in. And it turned out not to be a collection. Hmm. What do I do now? I got to make a node. I didn't even know what a node was. And just my friends and I were just like, let's make a node in Morningside Park. And people asking around, where's the node? Where's the node? Where are players building? Telling you they're building LA, LA is going like crazy. Portage Park in Chicago is going like crazy. Other, certain other neighborhoods are going like crazy. Players have self selected where they want to put their what we call Spark. Spark is a special token. Upex is your money. Spark is your building capacity. I want to build an apartment building. I need the equivalent of Spark put in a certain number of hours. I have one Spark. On an apartment building, it's going to take me 5,400 hours. Actually, I don't know how many days that is, but it's about eight months. My 10 spark is less than one month. So the more spark you have, the quicker you can get things done. I've got almost 10 spark now, I've got about nine. Uh, so I can build things I like with reasonable pace. Nine spark is nothing compared to how much is in the game. Yeah, there are communities throwing 150, 200 spark. You know, the big, big neighborhoods are putting three, four, five hundred spark towards building them up. So 
players are cooperating to build out the metaverse. It's creating value for those neighborhoods. It's also creating a community on Discord and in the future in the game. Like-minded players, friends can hang out together, build the upland together. One of the first things you should know about is notes. I think it's even more valuable than uh, buying collection properties, but we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Start having the right tools. You're going to need to be on Discord. It's the upland official Discord. I made the mistake of not knowing about Discord um, for my first city release, uh, which is LA. The challenge is, let's say they release LA at nine in the morning Pacific time US. That's six in the afternoon, or it was wherever I was at the time. Okay. Then on Discord, they make an announcement. Okay, we're five minutes late. We're starting in five minutes. You're waiting in game. You don't even know what's going on. Everyone else in Discord knows exactly what's going on, and you're like, <laughs> Where, when is this going to open? You need Discord because you need those live updates. You need to be on the official Upland uh, Discord channel. I also recommend Analytic Assassins. Up to you if you want to be part of the community day to day. There's so many communities out there. The reason I like Analytic Assassins for new city releases is it shows you what many players in the game think will be valuable. Thousands of players checking analytic assassins, downloading their guide, saying, okay, well, these are 10 likely collections in Arlington, Texas. Uh, I'm going to speculate on them. There's a one week delay between an initial city release, finding out what the collections are, and that one week, week speculation goes like crazy. But if you're buying what you think, or minting, we call it minting the first time you buy, you're minting what other people think is valuable. It does not matter if it's a collection or not. You can sell it to people at a high price if they think it will be a collection. So knowing what other players think will be valuable will help you know what to mint in every new city. Now, analytic assassins, they put a lot of work in. They do their best to tell you what's important in the city. There's players. They can be right. They can be wrong. Don't put too much faith in any one person saying it's going to be this. That collection is going to be that. I tried to do collection uh, predictions on main medium back in the day, getting them all wrong. I was like, you know what? I should not be publishing this on medium because I'm just misleading players. I don't have any special insight. What I do know is I now design my game strategy over what I think other players are going to do. Yeah. That. Players are going to want to mint, for example, uh, this part of Manhattan, this part of Queens. Okay, well, I want to mint it there as well because they want it. And then I can either keep it or sell it. The other two things is knowing the price. It can be frustrating to know the exact price of a neighborhood from the game because your view will not match the neighborhood. It will be bigger than the street. How to kind of get the exact information you need. So you can go on upxland.me or uplandoptimizer.com, and I've just put upland, uh, upxland uh, as the image here. And you can say, okay, what is the price of this neighborhood in Rio? Like Plata. It will tell you. You can sort it by the size of the land, the uh, last, last sale price, by collections. Whatever you want it. You want to know the most expensive price or the cheapest price. What we call the floor. Now, if the floor is 10,000, I never list under the floor. Some people like to do that and say, I know now the floor is 10,000. I'll sell it for 9,900. If you want to sell it cheap and you want it to, to move, if the floor is 10,000, sell it for 10,100, it's going to move. The tap faith. You don't need to, to chase it to the bottom. Never need to chase the bottom, but it's good to know where the bottom is and design your buying and selling strategy based on that. Now we're just looking at upxland.me. You can see you can search for properties, you can search for meta ventures, which are player run businesses, you can search for users, you can type in my username and the O2. Uh, 
Uh, you can find my sins. That means if you are the property and there is a little airplane, airplane gives you a jump or a move in the game. You can jump anywhere in the city you're in. Now, what happens if you jump to your own property? You get a free sense, right? So find my sin allows you to jump around any given city in here as close as possible to collecting these airplanes will then allow you to jump to other people's properties because you have a, more moves in the game. You can have up to 11 moves uh, in a typical environment. You're going to want to need, you're going to need those moves. Before you go to any city release, have 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, airplanes ready. If you want to jump around the board, right? And you don't want to worry about having enough to move to left the board. It's going to be hard Optimize your strategy if you're also looking for airplanes. So find my send is really helpful once you own some properties. Uh, treasure hunting will tell you the timing. Some lawyers who are really good at treasure hunting and you want to compete for treasures. You're like, okay, there will be a new uh, competitive treasure hunt starting in 10 minutes. And then the leaderboards will show you who's making the most topics, who's buying the most properties, selling the most properties, who is the most sends. Et cetera, et cetera. There's all sorts of data there, statistics and things you need to know. So, plan optimizer can be good. I find it useful if, for example, I have 100 properties and I've got a bunch, I think I've got about 600 properties. You know, I've big on LA and Chicago. But what happens if you know, I'm putting the properties in the collections that are most valuable? So, Example, maybe I have five city, I have 10 properties in Chicago, but only five can go into the city club. Maybe I want to check that I'm putting my best properties into the city club collection. And you get one freebie collection for the city club. You put your five most valuable properties there, and you'll get a, a decent bonus, like one for five. How do I know that I'm optimized, that I'm making the best use of my collections? Upland Optimizer will do that for me. So I use Upland Optimizer for maps, for optimizing my collections. I often use apexland.me. Honestly, it's just shorter to type out. Um, they're both very good tools to use. So, mistake number five, not having a strong strategy. Honestly, Thought my strategy because I watched a lot of Loyal Doyle, who has a great YouTube channel. Loyal Doyle has a typical strategy of buy and hold, as well as invest in nodes, right? His node, building up his part of the metaverse, people following, all good. I thought I wanted to be that type of player. I wanted to buy a lot of collection properties and hold them. I wanted to buy them at mint, but not pay too much for them. That's why I went. Heavily into LA, right? I wanted a new city, buy lots of properties, get my collections. I realized that wasn't the game I wanted to play. You can play Upland so many different ways. You don't have to play it like any other player out there. You could just play the game collecting FC Portos, soccer mementos, buying and selling those. Do you know which? Players are having a great day, you snap up their memento as soon as possible because you know it's going to be valuable. More money. Okay, so if you're an FC Porto fan, you can be watching the game, you can see the guy score a goal, you can get on upland, buy his memento if it hasn't been bought yet. It's going to be worth more money after the game because he scored that goal. Right? So far, we only had men's soccer. In the future, we have women's soccer. Uh, over the last 10 months, I joined basically just around 1st of January, maybe it was the 30th, 31st of December last year, 1st of January this year. I've been in the game 10 months, plus or minus a week or two. I'm trying to work out my strategy, the thing I care most about is racing. I should be all in on cars. That's my strategy now, is to focus more on cars. 
which means I need more UPEX that is liquid. And I need to be ready to buy and sell both in UPEX and USD in dollars. Because cars are expensive right now. Three, three hundred dollars, three hundred and ten dollars for a series two R. You don't need to know all these if you're a new player. Three hundred dollars for a car that's a lot. You're like, damn, that's a huge investment. Well, people want to be involved in racing from the get go. So this is the hot new thing. Is it still going to be worth three hundred dollars a year from now? Maybe not. There'll be more cars in the game. Uh, my strategy is to become a car dealership. So by getting involved early, then I think I have a better chance of being involved in actually buying and selling cars in the metaverse. And I'm going to have a dealership. Fingers crossed. But that's my strategy. I've decided that I want a car dealership. I want to buy and sell cars. Everything else is I'll try anything. I'm going to try everything. That's not the central strategy. The central strategy is going to be the car dealership. And let's see how it does. When I say try everything, give everything a go because I'm I'm like enjoying this. This is Upland is a lifestyle at this point. I enjoy it. I love it. But you know, every month or so, they're rolling out new features. And actually, I've noticed since I've joined that the pace of new features is accelerating. So there's a lot more game mechanics, small or large changes to the game that are rolling out. And so one of the things that's rolling out, okay, FC Porto was September. That was the first European football team, the first soccer team in all of Upland. Well, now we're in November, we got a FIFA partnership. Okay, well, back in September, NFL, which is the NFL Players Association, NFLPA, and FC Porto have two types of collectibles, plus what we call a variant. So an essential means you can have their player's card from this year, 2022. A memento means you have their playing card from this game. If they're having a great game, their stats are on fire, it's worth more money. Waiting for is more functionality, including what we call spotlights. Spotlights are video digital collectibles. Now, with the FIFA World Cup here, now we've got spotlights. What we're going to hopefully get next time, or very soon, is what we call replicas, where we can burn some of the essentials, making them both rarer. But if we burn, for example, five essentials, don't quote me until this is you know, confirmed. But let's say five essentials. We get the equivalent of a memento replica. And now our collection is worth more. So uh, then there's variants which just randomly, if I collect 10 essentials, maybe one of them is the away jersey instead of the home jersey. You know, they kind of look cool and they stand out and they're good. Uh, people like them. How, what do I mean by adapting to new features and events? Upland is releasing Rio expansion as a new city, or the equivalent of a new city. Uh, you can mint properties, you can uh, you know, buy and sell them normally. So the World Cup, you can do sale up out, so the sale is where the finals may be. You can't directly mint any properties, you have to win them. How are you going to win them? You got to get involved in the World Cup collectibles. You have to get these mementos, these uh, essentials. You're going to need to get passes. You're going to need to get, you know, different. You have to learn how this works. Let's say I get a pass. It gives me five random cards. Okay, I just spent twenty thousand upex. I don't know where you're going to learn the exact pricing. So, with my 20,000 Upix, I've got five players from different teams. Well, I'm going to swap some of them so that I can collect Australia and you can collect England. Okay? Now my five can form a collection. Okay? That collection is going to give me what we call fan points. What are those fan points going to give me? Well, 
probably fine. In, let's say, the top 100, details coming soon, I'm going to get a special, what we call Block Explorer, which is my game token. It's going to be the Australian National Football Team. So it's going to be inspired by the Australian National Football Team. So if I'm into the Australian football team and you're into France, you're going to want to collect in order to get that French national football team block explorer. France has a chance of winning it all. So if France wins the upland, uh, it wins the World Cup. A block explorer is going to be worth a lot more than when you started. So you now have to think not only what do I want today, you have to think what do I want next week, and then what will I do next week that's going to help me next month. That's how upland works. What am I going to do next month that helps me next year? A lot of features are not released yet, even though we have hints of them. So, for example, I have lots of large properties. They're not that useful yet. I know that there's some version of farming coming in. There's going to be what's called the stem token or the life token, or we're waiting for it. Okay. You're going to need large properties to gather this resource. So, I'm not that worried. I'm holding. Useful and it's a future uh, game functionality, and I'm getting paid for it. In FIFA World Cup, I'm going to be buying FIFA passes. I'm going to be trying to collect mementos and essentials that I think will help me get the block explorers I want. Uh, you choose which teams you want. But, you know, for example, I might go for one famous team and one or two teams that I just like. Okay. Uh, what? Teams are going to be most valuable to players. You know, probably is going to be Brazil, France, Argentina, Spain, England, right? The top teams. Maybe Canada, right? Maybe there's a few Canadians playing up one. So I have a strategy to make sure I'm getting that French block explorer. I have to prepare now. Well, not now, next week. We've got 10 days to go uh, when I took this uh, screenshot. Now we have about a week to go to the launch of the launch. So, tip number two. If I buy a property for 10,000 upics, and that's pretty normal uh, for non starter properties, we could probably sell it for 12,000. But if I buy it in a neighborhood that people care about, I can probably sell it for 20,000. The most valuable properties are the ones that other players care about. And ultimately drive the most value creation in uplands. Trust me, like if you bought in certain neighborhoods of LA like Century City, maybe you spent 50,000 up to get in. Get in now is 150,000 or 200,000 up because all of those properties are bought up and they're considered valuable to the community. Much more than flipping it for 60,000. You're getting 3x instead of 1.2x. So, most of the value is going to be driven by other players. When they released a kind of Chicago expansion, I thought, oh, yeah, I was like, well, okay, O'Hare is one of those neighborhoods people will want the airport. That was kind of cool, stood out. You know, I've already flipped a couple of properties for USD. So the, the strategy was reasonable. I didn't make as much money as I thought I would. But I definitely made some money. Because other players cared about over here. Okay? Other players care about Porch Park, probably uh, the most built up in terms of number of buildings, a neighborhood in Upland. It is not the most built up in percentage of neighborhood. And the sheer number of buildings is over 2,000 buildings in Porch Park. People care about this part of Chicago. So that means it's valuable. Patience, patience, patience. Someone always told me that FOMO is your worst enemy and your best friend. Just be patient. If they announce that there's going to be in game chat, it's going to come in quarter four. It might come in quarter four. It might come in quarter one, 2023. But it's coming. Right? If they announce that there's racing, it's going to be multiplayer racing. You know, first we have the single player, and then we have multiplayer. Everything comes in its own time. I know it can be hard to adjust to this kind of waiting game. But if they've announced it, they're 
kann ich nur. Auf einer Seite kann ich nur. Wie viel Zeit können wir das? So. Ablein ist ein Leader. Let's stress it. Ja. Especially in New City Releases. And I wouldn't recommend this for Rio, because Rio has already been released and it's an expansion. But whichever nation wins World Cup, their capital city will be released into Upland in December. The city is coming on or around December 18th. That's the finals. So let's say France wins, Paris is going to be released. People who want to be buying, maintaining the top properties on the Champs Elysees in, in Paris. Everyone wants here. I buy one. Great. 50,000, 50,000 UPEX. You're a new player, maybe you got one for 20,000. People are speculating like crazy because they think, well, if I buy it from, from you for 100,000, I can sell it tomorrow for 120, 150. I can click, click, click. They're trying to make a quick buck. Or they're worried about missing out because there's not many properties on Champs Elysees. So, my strategy is most collections take three properties. If I've only got one in a hot neighborhood, I'll flip it. That collection reveal because I'm like, okay, I'm still short too. So, if I'm right, I need to put in 200, 300,000 upix in order to benefit. So I might as well just flip it for a good profit now, let someone else chase their collection. If I had three, I'm going to risk it. Why? Because if I'm wrong, every city has what we call the city collection. So Arlington has the Arlington collection. Put three properties into my Arlington collection, even if I missed out. I'm guessing right or if I guess wrong. So I can take a risk with three properties that I think are going to be in a collection, knowing that if I'm wrong, I just dump them into my city collection. If it's the Paris collection, if it's the London collection. If I've only got one, flip it. Because someone else is going to be trying to uh, grab the hot property in the hot time before the collection reveal. We'll see that the promo is going to dissipate pretty quickly after all the information is available. So don't get too caught up, don't get too attached. If you've only got one property that you think is valuable, someone else is going to want to buy it. Take your profit, move on. If you've got three, up to you, but I would often take a risk. So, because um, I know that at the worst, you're going to be able to put it in the Rio collection, the Manhattan collection, or London collection. That's it. Um, there is going to be many more details in the comments section or in the description, just links to different resources. So my advice to you is take your time, learn the game. I would honestly put some money in. If, if you're going to be an upland, you might as well put some money in so that you get the bonus and you become an uplander. Without that, you can't even sell your properties. And you're gonna wanna try and make use of the next five weeks. Use this Rio expansion in order to build your topics for whatever's coming on December 18th. So yeah, I've created a medium article where I explain the strategy in depth, pretty detailed, got everything I think you need to know as a new player. So what is my point? Let's say I put in $20, $20 get my 10 bonus. Get my four, so it's 35,000. 34,000. If I buy 10 FSA or starter properties, by the next five weeks, the game will allow me to sell two properties per week. I sell two of those FSA every week. What can I probably do? I can flip those 10 for 50,000. Now instead of 135,000, I've got 65,000, I've got 70,000. Depends on your exact strategy. But I'm much more prepared for the big new city coming down the pipeline on December 18th. That, I think, is going to have a lot of possibility. Uh, and that's what I think your time horizon should be. How can I get ready for December 18th? 
I want to be ready for that uh, new international city. And I think it's going to be a fantastic opportunity to make some Mavics get yourself established in Upland. And uh, that's it for me. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a, a great time in Upland. Best of luck with the FIFA, with uh, the Rio expansion. Take care.